We are here at the Mandarin Oriental in Geneva to visit our friends at Sotheby's who have some amazing watches on offer in their Geneva sale as well as their upcoming London and New York sales. Let's go take a look. Welcome back everybody. In this video, we are sitting down with our very dear friends of Sotheby's to take a look at some watches from their upcoming Geneva sale, which happens in a couple days now from their future London sale. And then finally their New York sale, we have Tom Heap with us from the London office and Rich Lopez from New York. We're gonna go through some of the watches they have coming up that we thought and Sasha and I thought were very interesting, some that they thought were very interesting and show to you guys and talk about them. Uh, I guess let's start with Geneva, right, gentlemen, since that sale's happening in a couple days. So sadly, this video will come out after that sale has already ended, but yeah. at least we get to talk about the watches and look at them. So what do you, I don't have no clue what you guys have picked out. I, I know you had a little bit of input. Yes. Uh, so stylistically, I could see why, uh, but let's walk through a few of the watches. What do we got on the table? Choose wherever you want to start. Um, I think probably one we'll kick off with is this uh, blue dial, Tuscan dial, uh, platinum perpetual calendar from AP. Nicely, it's numbered number one, which is quite a cool kind of detail. And this actually comes from a group of watches within the sale called the Hidden Collection. Uh, and essentially, one of uh, our colleagues, uh, Philip in Germany, uh, met with this consigner whose husband had been sort of a collector. Um, but we think he'd had kind of uh, a close friendship with a guy who was an authorized dealer for AP in Germany. Okay. So he had like this full box of watches that are predominantly numbered number one. Wow. So this is from, from that group. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice to actually see these within that group, they're all box fresh. So they're really fantastic looking pieces. I mean, the color of this dial is really vibrant when you kind of compare it to one that's kind of set in the sh in, you know, someone's wrist in kind of daylight and had a bit where it's got real kind of deep blue to it. Cause I, I know what you're talking about. And especially on these dials, you see a lot of peeling around the mm. registers. This one looks to be fantastic. And I think this is even more relevant now, especially with John Mayer introducing the, the revitalized Tuscan yeah. dial, mm -hmm. which is something they haven't done since the nineties, obviously. Uh, in the Royal Oak 41 millimeter perpetual case. But yeah, this looks really nice. So I said in German our sale right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then also when they, I think when they asked about the reference, um, which is not written on the case, um, it's a four digit, I think it's a 5548, which is meaning first series platinum and with the Tuscan and number one, it's it pretty much kind of embodies like the grail of these uh, non 36 round cases. Yeah. 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 And the non, the non Royal Oak essentially yeah. perpetual calendar and still on original strap and buckle. Yeah. Fantastic. Look at the condition. Yeah. It looks so <laughs> very this nice. Is a watch to have. Uh, boxes. out of all the ones I could see so far, uh, this has got to be probably will probably be my favorite, but we'll see. Let's keep it's going down the line. Here at the mm -hmm. So I ain't going to get it cheap is what you're saying or at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Give yeah. it the old college try. Um, what is number two down the line? Uh, so this is quite cool. This is like an early '90s um, Frank Miller, also number number one. Okay. Handy. Same collection. So uh, no different different, <laughs> different group, but uh, it's got some really nice uh, kind of details. Um, so first of all, probably a good place to start is it's a Hagman case. So it's uh, it's an early uh, Frank Miller perpetual calendar, and it's also a minute repeater, um, but as anything else, like the condition's really fantastic. I mean, the dial has, you know, it's got a little bit of aging to it, but it's, you know, it kind of carries itself quite well for this kind of patina. But I love like the coin edges and coin stuff. Edge, yeah. The thing I really like as well is it's not signed Frank Mueller, it's just Frank Geneva at six o'clock, which is very cool. Yeah, I mean, I, there's not really a lot of like Frank Mueller vintage yeah, kind of, so to speak. And yeah, then... so this is like pre-Frank Frank. Frank. Mm -hmm. So this would actually be more, I think even late eighties and there was a Omega, he used to own an Omega movement, Turbion movement, mm -hmm. that he encased in a Hagman case, and then, you know, handmade a dial, um, also guilloche, and that sold at Anticorum a few years ago for $550,000. Wow, not so bad. Um, What's the estimate on this guy? You remember? I think we've got this in, in 50, 50 to 100,000. Okay. Yeah. So presumably, minute repeater, uh, perpetual calendar, um, with a very, very cool hidden detail. Oh, yeah, I was just about oh, to say, yeah. oh, <laughs> show them. You have to show this. I've <laughs> never seen this before. This so, is wild. So in the in the strap, you <laughs> unscrew and you remove the, the uh, perpetual calendar setting tool, which would use essentially to set the calendar. Well, I've the... never seen that before. That is think absolutely about that wild. This is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then you put it back in there, and you screw it back in, and so you're basically never left without a uh, the, the setting tool. tool. Yeah. And that was integrated into the alligator strap, 
Um, Have you ever seen? I've never seen that before. I've Wild. never seen that, but that's kind of genius and kind of like little detail that like I love about this watch as well. Yeah, and it's sad that like Frank Mueller made this watch and then straight. Dare I say? <laughs> I mean, dare I say that his watches yeah. took a very different turn, and the fact that they produced this and that they had the opportunity to continue producing a watch like this and they chose not to. Kind of sad, but like it's very nice to see, and yeah. I think this is a very, very Quality. special watch. I mean, the slot bezel, the coin yeah. heads, the very breguet esque. It also has kind yeah. of like could have been a Jorn yeah. type of direction, yeah, yeah. and he didn't go that way. He went a very different way. But like you know, I, I mean, think that this vintage stuff is really kind of like the, the like the vintage independent kind of vibe we were talking about, Urban Jurgensen and uh things to to look out for where everybody's you're, paying attention to listen it right well his, it's a no regret like you can't regret this watch like either you buy it now or, or forever hold your peace like you know it. and his cushion case watches that he's very well known for they're iconic at this point um but they're not the quality and you know high-end watch making that this is and so it, it's sad to me that he didn't make produce more watches like this but it's Good to see that he did, and the guys, the fact that you guys have number one is very, very special. Uh, I'm excited to see how this does. Uh, another watch I'd love to own, but yeah. we'll the see. hand guilloche dial, the handcrafted dial. If you look at it with a loop, like just the old technique that is used, mm -hmm. it looks a little rough, but like yeah. you don't see that working yeah. today. Yeah. It's incredible. It's, it's quite nice when you kind of see that kind of level. You see like you know the young watchmaker in it, like the same way with you get you know early John, you can see this artisanal kind of style of making that you know as production increases you start to lose a little so it's it's a really nice find yeah. i dare say there's a lot of craftsmanship and love that he actually a hundred percent that's yeah. like the best way to put it absolutely you know this is like passion yeah and, and then it became commercialized <laughs> exactly um okay so speaking of jorn exactly. yeah. what do we have here this is essentially one of the the kind of uh, 30th anniversary piece uh, so i think it's kind of loosely based on his kind of first pocket watch which he made in about 83 mm. okay. i think this came out in 2013 and so this is uh, 75 of 99, and it's got that double barrel um, in the kind of flipping, almost officer's case pack that you believe. Shorthand, of... it's called the T30? Yep. Yes. Correct. Barrel. Silver case, rose gold. Yeah. Yes. So we can see the tarnish on the silver case, mm -hmm. which is also Beautiful. very, very cool. Which is really nice. And it's got, um, you know, kind of like an engine turn sort of case back and through the side. So it's got, it's kind of almost got like a kind of shotgun element to it as well, which is quite nice. But right. It's, it's very cool indeed. The it, officer's uh, case pack is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, the dial just pops out. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think this early Jordan stuff, you know, and like I, I've talked a little bit on earlier videos about independent watches, but vintage independent watches, like early days of certain independent watchmakers and, you know, the pieces they produce. And I think this fits in that category. And it's truly a special watch, and especially with Jorns and how much they have going on, usually on the dial and the configurations of them. I always love this piece because it's, a much more simple approach you know and until you open it up in the back uh, that's when you really see the magic but looking at it from the front it, it appears to be a very simple watch uh and, and i've always admired this one and uh, just a fantastic piece so we should move on to the next ap yeah another, another <laughs> so from a turn me on <laughs> jorn to no but this is a special ap uh it's not one you see every day i think I've sold one of these with this style case, but not integrated bracelet, if I remember correctly. Our friend in California has it. I have to go back and look. But anyways, tell us about this one. So again, it's this is I think this is slightly later than this one. I think this is like an 82. Um, it's not a number one, unfortunately, and it's right. not from that collection either. But, you know, it's quite nice to kind of see this kind of thing coming up where you do have that trend kind of coming to more kind of bracelet style pieces. Um, and, you know, with almost like, I suppose you'd almost call this an emperor case, wouldn't you? With the, the kind of integrated um, bracelet into the case there. But it's quite nice to see this kind of in between something like this and a royal oak. So it kind of nods to it with this kind of octagonal case. But right. It's, uh, it's very cool. Yeah. So that bracelet actually just brings me like, I feel like it was impossible. And we talked about this. Like It was like almost impossible to sell integrated bracelet watches five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And like people just like didn't like even consider them and it was like a thing like, oh i don't know if it fits and how do you get it to fit and now people are realizing that the buckle has three adjustment sizes and then like you could add an extension, extension yeah, exactly. or shorten it or and also like that kind of has like a long look to the mm -hmm. this the specific wrist yeah bracelet. the well indoor style bracelet um i think that the sort of like octagonal shape that's there which is kind of like a wink to you know the royal oak and also even the code 1159 which has a mid case which is 
octagonal. Again, it's a complication. You're a perpetual calendar with a moon phase. And what's the starting on the estimate? It is fifteen to twenty five thousand Swiss francs. Right, yeah, I mean, it's but for a watch, you'll also right there, you'll also never price, find right? again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, can't go wrong. you can't go wrong. I mean, listen, who knows what it'll actually and end you, for? Yeah, and if you but, do a nice little comparison next to the Tuscan, it's like I'm yeah, just... and it and it also appears a little bit bigger because of the shape yeah. of the case. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, these are both of these watches are watches that if you have the opportunity to buy them here and you don't, you might. Not have that opportunity ever again, especially the Tuscan because it's number one. Yeah. Uh, but both of these watches are are exceptionally rare. You know, uh, we see a lot of watches pass through our hands, and as do you guys, and you never see these. You know, they just they just don't come up for sale. Uh, both fantastic watches, both from a brand that I admire very much. So uh, from an era, I think of them, that was like the greatness. Uh, this was the one of the best eras for Adam R. Piguet. Um, and the time he couldn't be better with the reintroduction of the Tuscan dial yeah, on a perpetual sure. calendar with a John Mayer. So this is like perfect, perfect timing perfect too. Timing. So I see next a trio of Cartier, yeah. and Cartier is so very hot. That Hansel's so hot right now. This ends Geneva. So this this is Geneva. Geneva is now over. We're now moving to London. Yes. Right. Yes. So um, so these three Cartier pieces are kind of and, fun stuff. And before you start, when is the London sale? So the London sale opens on the 16th. Um, May and runs through to the 29th. So it's not it's an online sale. sale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an online okay. sale. It's about 100 lots. Okay. Uh, You'll that's be some nice stuff. As well, Emma. Yeah, yeah. We've got a preview in London from the 26th to the 29th. So, so we will drop Tom's information in the description below. If you're interested in any of these watches, need any extra more information, pictures, obviously drop them a message. You guys will have plenty of time, presumably, to get that information after you see this video. But let's talk, uh, let's take a look at these three sure. beautiful watches. So, um, three tanks. Um, let's kind of start with this puppy. It's a little bit different to the others. Um, so this is, you know, we're kind of all familiar with the normal, but this is like the larger case size. So it's, it's kind of unusual. It looks like a normal allongé. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's got, you know, a, it, the bigger case size I really like. I think it's, you know, fantastic. And with the octagonal winder as well. But, um, but yeah, there aren't too many of them around. Um, it still has some, uh, kind of nice case marks here. Uh, so you can kind of. We can see kind of case numbers and so on. It right. is signed Cartier and so on, which is quite cool. And we think it's Paris because it's hallmarked with French marks and everything like that. But it's, um, you know, it's a nice thing and it's a little bit different to a Louis um, or an Ultra Slim. Um, size is fantastic. Yeah, it sits really lovely, yeah. really well on the wrist. And it's, you know, it's not it's not overwhelming. And then, you you know, you kind of have the crystal, which is kind of slightly raised. Away right. The case, but it's it's a very cool thing. What year? I think we're kind of thinking kind of mid-70s for, for this puppy, I think. Okay. But it's... it's Pretty cool. Right. So yeah, beautiful. Well received yeah. already in the market with the Cartier community. Yeah. 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 It's a nice Which step. is all actually very important yeah. for mm -hmm. like the powers that be that collect Cartier yeah. to like say that watch is fantastic. Because there's a lot of uh you know, redials of Cartier or mm -hmm. cases not matching or even straight up cases being manufactured back in the day that were not originally at like, leaving the factory. Mm -hmm. Uh so it's always to get a get a Get yeah. a good, nice stamp of approval on these watches. <laughs> and the time is this the one that has the original deployment as well? Uh, I think on this one, I think we might actually have the deployment for this one as well. Yes, but it's not matching. Okay. Uh, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Tell us about the middle. So the middle one. Okay. I've got a bit of a thing for Cartier London. Okay. It's uh, a bit of a kind of soft spot. I mean, the other thing is my office in New Bond Street is like. 50 doors up from the, you know, the Cartier workshop there. <laughs> um, so this hasn't traveled very far in terms of when it's being sold. So this is a London Centre. Uh, we kind of think this is uh, early 70s as well. It is it's extremely centre Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Extremely curvy. It's so curvy. But it's like the London workshops where, you know, I mean, at the time it was, you know, London, Paris and New York were basically different companies. Yes. Right. Um, and so the case makers, I think... They used a couple of different local case makers. I think they used Arthur Withers and Wright and Davies to make a lot of the kind of cases in this period for the crash and um, Sintray and London Ultra Slim cases. Um, and, you know, this this kind of came from a, uh, the original owner's family. Uh, this guy called me up and he was like, hey, I've got my dad's, my dad's Cartier. Could I send you some pictures? And I was like, yeah, sure thing. And kind of sent me this picture and I kind of got on the phone to him immediately. I was like, bring this to my office immediately. Yeah, this watch is <laughs> Stunning. But it's so oh, sharp. Man. You know? And the nice thing is it's just little details like the London hallmarks on the side. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a deploying clasp as well. It's all punch JC. I heard for London specifically, there is like a now like online, like all the pictures of all the different hallmarks, mm -hmm. but only for London. Yeah. So uh, like the Cartier. The, well, yeah, I mean, like with um, 
you the nice thing about these is with the hallmarks um in the uk they're they're really specific with it so they yeah. have different um you know different symbols for different years and so on so you can basically track the asset that's what it was specific you date. can tell the year by yeah. the hallmark that's what it so, was yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm being really bad i can't remember the top of my head exactly yeah, but i think it's 71 72 <laughs> but we sold another one like this um in geneva like four years ago i remember that uh it was a 2021 so a couple of years ago and it was it um proceeded the crash and the sale that we did like 800 000. Oh, it did i remember yeah. did a yeah. huge yeah. amount i remember that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy i remember um no but the condition on this watch yeah. is fantastic the tarnish on the case the hallmarks are so crisp i could even without a loop you could yeah, almost yeah. see, see the crown right the exactly yeah. the serial number is super crisp but like just it's, a stunning example it's wonderful it yeah. really is and absolutely and he no. came came in with his watch and he was like i've got this other one as well i don't know if you're interested in it can I open it up and it's another white um uh tank from from london not not a century unfortunately right. that would be nice but it's like a lady size louis okay. okay so it's really really cool nice. same collection yeah yeah so basically it was this guy um it's this guy's father's and uh, he God, bought one for his wife and of course neither of them really wasn't very much and he was kind of saying you know when he it was never anything he could kind of get close to and his dad never wore it so he didn't really have a huge kind of attachment to it yeah which okay. is which is good for us right but <laughs> but you know yeah, I mean, listen, uh, I, I've gone through that path with a lot of clients in terms of sentimentality, mm -hmm. and I always ask them, like, is this something that, like, your father, grandfather wanted you to own, or would they be happy if you sold it and used the money to something more important in your life, you know? And it's just, everybody's got different prerogatives. Uh, so if it benefits to him yeah. and his family, uh, why not? Uh, last watch, last Cartier before we move on so, to yeah. New York. This one's really cool. This is a another very cool Cartier. So this is... Um, you know, it's the kind of uh, larger Louis Auto. Right. Uh, but it's got a nice bit of provenance. So uh, David Prowse, who played Darth Vader in the first Star Wars movie, was given this by the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia. So wow. it's got a nice, you know, it's a double layer there. Nice. So, so there is another one as well. So there's a Vendome Auto, which was given to his brother. And they were both bodybuilders, and they were both like six foot six, so they were big boys. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why he was picked for the Vader role. And... Um, yeah, he was given given this watch, and he kind of walked, there's uh, it comes with his autobiography as well, which is quite nice, and it kind of talks about him like hanging out in like swimming pools in 1979 in <laughs> LA. And there's a bit in the book where he says, you know, I was doing a couple of lengths in the pool, and then realised I was wearing my Cartier. Oh, <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Not the most waterproof watch. watch. Yeah. No, but uh, apparently he got away with it, so you can you know it's it's nice enough, and it's you know it's got that kind of. Um, you know, they're, they're wonderful watches on their own. I think they're, they, you, these kind of sit on the market like 15,000, yeah, yeah, something like that. But having that kind of, you know, Darth Vader's Cartier tank, it's, <laughs> they're yeah. worse watches, right? So he didn't get it from his father. No, 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 he didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, at least we got the joke. All right. Oh, oh, oh God. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, we're doing the best we can here, people. We're doing the best we can. Um, yeah, cool it looks it looks beautiful though as well. Uh, strong hallmarks, very cool, and the provenance is super cool. Obviously, mm -hmm. It'd be better if it was Luke's, but you know, hey, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, <laughs> well, thank you for showing me these. These are incredible. is it working or I, 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 yeah. uh, <laughs> I don't want to be accused of breaking any of their watches. So, yeah. What do we have for New York, kind sir, Rich? Well, come on, we our sale is on June fifth. We have four highlights here. We're gonna start off with the six two six five Daytona Tiffany. In great condition. Okay. It's not just six, a gold 665. Gold. It's really, really nice. Look at the dial and everything. Look at the case. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't looked at the dial. Yeah. The case is fantastic. The rivet bracelet. Wow. It's a stunning, stunning watch. Beautiful watch. Yeah. Beautiful like condition. Daytonas. I do. I love yeah. Daytonas. You know, I love everything. You know, anything that's interesting. Uh, but yes, I do love yeah. Daytonas. <laughs> the condition looks to be perfect. I mean, I'm not looping the dial, but it looks like all the loom is there. Everything looks exactly as it should be. Stunning piece. And so, you don't see a lot of gold Tiffany & Co. No, you don't. Signed Daytonas. You see a lot of steel. I feel like those were obviously cheaper, so people were able to walk into yeah. Tiffany and buy it and not really worry too much. Uh, but gold, you really don't see a lot of. Actually, and you you have expertise with Tiffany dials. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even without the Tiffany & Co., this would have been a fantastic example of just a champagne 6265. Uh, but Tiffany & Co. Yeah, adds a double sign dial that adds value a, to it. As a huge layer yeah, to it. Yeah, you can't go yeah. wrong with a little piece like this. No, it's this is piece. absolutely stunning. Which is pretty amazing, but we have something that's even rarer than that that I'm really, really proud of that we came through. One of my colleagues, uh, the from, yeah. I saw that sitting over there. I'm yeah. like, Ooh, they got one. So my colleague Jonathan, who you know very well from past episodes, or, right? He located this a beautiful zero breath three four four six from 1937. I believe this is a third or fourth one coming to market. But look at the condition; it's just 
This is a... It's a flyby chronograph. The book. This is such a crazy watch. I've always been like so in love with these. You because... see them in books, but you don't really... Yeah, you, don't really you know, it's like... It. But they're like, they just like so impossibly rare and they're so impossibly cool. I mean, this has... It's like a bubble back mixed with a mono pusher with a California dial with this huge concave bezel. And even it's though... It's like transitional. It's too. like everything rolled into one from the era... And, and to be honest, the, the case size is great. Like, dude, well, especially because the bezel sits so high and it's like it concave. It makes it a little bit bigger than what it really is. What a cool watch. And if you look at the dial closely, it's more like it's got a spider finish to it. Right. From the original owner, but it's beautiful. No, I mean, this is like the definition of an honest watch. Yeah. You know, honest, this is the definition of like, hey, listen, this is the original radium. It has weathered yeah. the dial, uh, but everything's as it should. You know, none of the print is missing. Yeah, these are bottom uh, fives that just got put away. And beautiful patina. the way it's supposed to degrade. Yeah, but yeah. what a stunning watch. I've always been in love with these watches. I've never owned one, uh, but for me, they're just like some of the coolest. Yeah. How do you estimate something so rare? Well, we thought highly of it, to be honest, but also we wanted to be fair for the market. So we'll let the market decide what really it's going to be. But at uh, RS, yes, right now for this piece, it's fifty to 100000 Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a comp on that that you... To be honest, there isn't. So okay. this is what we believe because of the rarity and what it is and the condition, all those points. And it should do quite well, I imagine, for the connoisseur of having every other Daytona and something yeah. special. I have a feeling it, it should sell above estimate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just hard to hard to gauge like uh, yeah. you know where where it's going to be, and also like this is like a great auction watch because I'm even curious to see like what is it going to do. do. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, like yeah. if this walks into my store, what do I offer somebody? Yeah. I have no clue. It's a diamond. It's an auction watch, you know? but most likely it's not going to walk in off the street to your office. Never say never, but it's so rare. It probably won't. Yeah, you like never know. Said, sometimes yeah. our clients don't know exactly what they have. It's yeah. something simple, and then when we see it, we're like. Oh my God! <laughs> it's, it's a zero graph, and they. I heard about say... this somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Well, May thirtieth, people, uh, go check it out in New York City if you are around, uh, and reach out to Rich if you're interested in bidding on it, which I am. Uh, but if you want to pay more than me, hit up Rich, get some more photos. It's a fantastic watch. Uh, what else do we so have here in Geneva to look at? To an amazing, honest, Patek Leave ninety six sector dial. Okay. Patina as well, mm -hmm. you know, original condition. Yeah, the, the sector case. dials are yeah. so rare, especially in steel case. Well, you know that John Behaft did the 96 book, which is amazing. Yeah. I was comparing it to what he has, and like sector dials are amazing on pocket watches. The case, it's just beautiful. Yeah, and and I just love steel Patek from this era because I always like to think that it, it was such a rare watch because of the reason they couldn't use steel. Well, first of all, Patek uh, loved to use precious metals. Precious metals. But yes. they also couldn't use steel because all the steel was supposed to be allocated it, to various it, armies, it, you know, to combat <laughs> and to, to use for machinery. Dials. But the sector yeah. dials just like draw you in and you just want to see everything, the detail. Right. It's a scientific dial, so it kind of like really fits in well with the stainless steel case. Yeah, and no one really minds that it's the smaller diameter. Like everybody's starting to wear these watches again. It, it's coming yes. back. We're going back to smaller Finally. No, and I've noticed for a very long time, though, that even regardless of that, but it's true, obviously, people are getting into smaller watches. The 96 has always held a place yeah. amongst collectors that it's like size be damned, 31 millimeters doesn't matter, okay. versus other similar size Pateks that everybody's like, no, it's too small. But when it comes to a 96, it yeah, just it works. Looks, it works you know? for everybody. It works for everybody. Before, it's before a 96, you were only offering to like a Japanese deal. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, whereas now it's more like... It's There's a larger fun. audience. I think yeah. because of Cardi. Cardi has actually started to open that door for other people to start wearing those type of watches. Mm -hmm. Like, you see Tom Brady now wearing a Cardi Crash. He's a big guy. It's 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and he's wearing a Yeah, Cardi a lot Crash. of guys like works. that. Yeah, Crash a lot of guys. Players, yeah. They're doing it. Yeah, it's great. absolutely. So hopefully they start following in 96. Yeah. Another example of a very honest, like, original watch. I like, really love to see that. Just that this is how it is. This is how it aged. It looks beautiful, fantastic. And, you know, you take it as it is. It's absolutely beautiful. Save the best for last. Another Patek Philippe. Okay. 1436. 1436. I saw it there. But it's, <laughs> I've been meanwhile, waiting. It's this is just split second. And it's activated at the crown. But the chronos it's amazing i played with it all day today to make <laughs> that it was actually working so i split it for you so people can yeah i won't i won't sometimes won't if you then. just don't split it it's just sitting there you right know, it just looks like a chronograph yeah, like you know but then when you do it through the crown, like a 130 it just yeah. looks like a 130 yeah Correct. but you activate it through the crown like you 
Come on, activate. You gotta hit. Do you want me to? Because yeah, I need your settings. So... No, 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 go for it. So reset. Look at that. Think about and such a rare, rare, rare watch. Think about watch. the craftsmanship that they had to go figure it out. Normally, you see the little, it, the little pusher that comes out at the crown. But right. They just did it in the simple crown. Which, if you don't know, you just look at it and it's like, oh, it's not a split. Right. Like, exactly. It's just a normal like yeah. one thirty chronograph. And rows on rows like adds another element to it yeah. as well. Like, uh, I was just about to say, incredible. Big dial's watch. crazy. Yeah. yeah. What a what a stunning watch. What is this estimated at? So we have it in our sale right now. We have it at 300 to 600, which I think is conservative for what it is. Right. People will say it's a smaller case, but once you really pay attention and know what it is, I think the estimates, it's on point. I think so, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, never see these. Yeah. Right. I think the only rare one is the 1536, but the rest of three known or whatever. Right. And <laughs> hallmarks all still visible, like, strong case, great dial, like, yeah, they have a nice case. assortment of watches in all our auctions right yeah, now. Yeah, you guys are doing great. Like, yeah. I, I'm very impressed. This yeah. is a, a really Fresh great market, selection great of watches. Condition, you know, original. We'd like to thank you for having us, guys. Yeah, of great. course. And, uh, you know, like Rich said earlier, they have 450 watches, it sounds like, on offer between the live sale and the online sale. So there's probably a ton of great We have something for everybody. Through. Something, something for, for everybody. everybody. Uh, how many watches are in the London sale? Much less, so it's about 100. Okay, so, so still, so between the two sales, you have 550 watches and options to go through. Um, again, we will link all of their information in the description below. If you need anything from the London sale or the New York sale, feel free to reach out to them. Good luck bidding. And guys, congrats on building uh, such a successful sale uh, all around. Yep, perfect. Thank you so Great. much. You okay. shut your mouth and you talk to me. I'm ready to go.